fixed asset posting groups are the link between the fixed asset subledger and the accounts in your general ledger. So if we go and have a look at our chart of accounts for starters, and go down to our fixed assets area, you can see that the sort of structure you end up with for uh, fixed asset charts of accounts is you have your acquisition account. Generally, these could be different. You have your acquisition account where the full purchase price of the fixed asset goes to, and then you have the accumulated depreciation accounts that the monthly depreciation for the balance sheet side of things will post. The monthly depreciation for the expense just posts into the expense area. This is telling you what the value of your assets on hand would be. The other thing you'll usually see in the fixed assets area is um, fixed asset clearing account or WIP, um, WIP accounts if you want to be accumulating the costs for a project and then adding them to fixed assets at a later date, you might have multiple WIP accounts sitting in this area as well. That then translates over into your fixed asset posting groups. So you can set up fixed asset posting groups to be whatever you like on them and a lot depends on how you post to the general ledger. So as a very, very basic, you want to have at least one posting group set up per acquisition cost account that you have in your um, chart of accounts. So you have your acquisition cost account, so that's your where you're seeing the original purchase price of your asset, and then the associated accumulated depreciation account. All of these other ones link then to different transactions. So this is saying when you dispose of an asset, what is the cost going to go to? In most cases, that would be the same, but you might want to be having your disposed assets posting to a different GL account. And then for, for, with financial reporting, you just combine this account and this account together. The same with your accumulated depreciation. Gains and losses. You can have a separate account or a single one that will be a P&L account and that's where um, you might have sold an asset or disposed of an asset and it still had a book value and you have uh, gotten proceeds more than the book value of the asset or less than. Maintenance expenses, if you choose to track maintenance, um, you can be putting those costs in there. So the way that would work is if you've got a maintenance invoice from uh, one of your vendors, you would code it to this maintenance balance account, whatever you define there, that would be a clearing account. And then you would do a fixed asset GL journal to add it to your asset. And that would then put the main asset maintenance expenses to this GL account and offset your clearing account. Your acquisition cost balance account, if um, you are coding things to a WIP account or coding things to a fixed asset clearing account and then adding them to fixed assets, this would be that clearing account. And then your depreciation expense account. So that's at a high level. Now what you can also do is you can see I've got a code here MV100 and that's because under my related posting groups and allocations I want to split my depreciation out. So at this level you can say yep it's going to go to 6230 the same account that's there. You could have this as multiple different uh, expense code accounts with percentage allocation splits. But the most common reason that you would probably do this is because underlyingly at a line level, you want to code it to a cost center. So while assets are generally held in the balance sheet, the depreciation expense is often sent to the cost center that it has ownership of that asset or is using that asset. So you can do that within your posting group. Those posting groups are then going to link up with your classes and subclasses to assign to assets so that they know where to post in the GL for all of the different transaction types.